it's one of the first things you learn as a brass player. Oil your valves and grease your slides. Everybody knows that, right? Well, people might think they know what that means, but this is one of the most common things I see as both a repair technician and a teacher that people do incorrectly. Hello and welcome. Today I'll be walking you through how to grease and oil your horn, and we will be getting super nerdy with it. Yay. For those of you that don't know me, hi, my name is Katie Rios, French horn teacher and music maker extraordinaire. We will be addressing the following points. What products I use and recommend, how to grease your slides, and how to oil your rotors. This is the second part of my two-part video series on horn maintenance, so if you haven't seen the first part where I walk you through how to clean your instrument at home, go check that out. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Let's start with slides. There are two main types of product you can use for lubricating your slides on your horn, gel and grease. They both have their perks, they both have their drawbacks, but they both work. I prefer to use grease myself, but I'll show you how to apply both kinds. Now, just a brief note, some instruments like trombones and trumpets need different lubricants for their slides, but these are not for horn players and are very specific to certain slides on those instruments, so these won't work for you. Also, steer clear of anything that is labeled specifically for woodwinds, like cork grease. Just look for slide gel and slide grease, like I said. Now, some people go off into very weird territory with things like Vaseline and lanolin, or one guy I know even uses toothpaste on his lights. <laughs> Later on in this video, I'll briefly touch on why I'd recommend that you stick with a gel or grease that was actually meant for brass instruments when I talk about synthetic versus petroleum-based lubricants in the oil section of this video. As I mentioned in my instrument cleaning video, I recommend that you always wipe down your slides before applying any new product to them. I like using just a touch of valve oil, which cuts grease extremely well, but simply wiping the slide with a clean rag or paper towel will do. Let's start with a gel. Slide gel has an almost glue-like consistency. It has a very strong hold and it will hold slides in very firmly. It's very grippy. This is great if you have slides that don't fit properly and tend to shift around, which is common in older instruments. Also, if you take your horn to the repair shop, refitting those slides is usually a super quick and easy fix. Gel usually comes in either a tub or a squeeze bottle. When using a tub, I recommend applying it with a small paintbrush. Just grab something cheap from the dollar store or raid your baby cousin's watercolor set and take theirs. Make sure the bristles are plastic so it doesn't shed hair onto your slide. Dip your brush into the gel and apply a small amount to the ends of your slide. Spread it all the way around the circumference. No need to spread it onto the length of the slide, it will do that by itself in the next step. If you have a squeeze bottle, put a few oozes onto the end and use a tip to spread the gel around. Hold down the valve to make it easier to work the slide in and out and replace the slide in the horn. With the valve still held down, move the slide all the way in and back out several times to spread the grease along the length of the slide. If there's excess when it is all the way in, use a paper towel and wipe off any globs. Now let's try the grease. Grease is usually more of a chapstick consistency and has a much softer hold than most gels I've used. The slides glide out easily and smoothly. The best part, for me at least, is that you can apply it with your fingers. I'd recommend doing this instead of rubbing it on straight out of a tube like chapstick so that you can control how much you're putting on. Whether you use grease or gel, the key is moderation. A little goes a long way, so don't overdo it. Make sure you apply small amounts regularly rather than trying to glob on a ludicrous amount in hopes that you can then avoid doing it again for a long time. Nope. Now for the oil. These are the oils that I use. You can see that they're labeled specifically for their purpose. I'll be using a light rotor oil, a bearing oil, and this machine oil. The light rotor oil will be going down my slides to oil my rotors. The bearing oil will be going on the back of my horn in this gap between the stop arm and the rotor casing. And this machine oil will be going under my caps. 
you need to have at least two kinds of oil for rotary valves, a thin rotor oil and a thick machine oil. A few things I'd like to say about oils. First, for my horn players out there, yes, there is a difference between rotor oil and valve oil. Typically, valve oil is formulated for piston valves and rotor oil is formulated for rotors. Rotary valves are also found on trigger trombones, bass trombones, rotary valve tubas, and on some specialty rotary trumpets. Valve oil will work on your rotors in a pinch, but I have found that rotor oil gives me the best results and absolutely think it's worth the investment. Second, oils are produced with different viscosity grades to accommodate different instrument needs. You'll notice here that I am using light rotor oil. That is because my rotors fit very snugly in their casings. Newer instruments or instruments that have recently had a valve rebuild would need this lighter oil. On the other hand, instruments that are not new or have significant wear might need the regular or thick rotor oil. That is because there's a lot more wiggling around in the rotor casings. So you need a thick oil to quiet the noise, fill up those gaps and maintain the seal. If you don't have a thick enough oil, air can leak out of any gaps and lead to a variety of issues. I've included a link in the description to Hetman's website where they give you all the nitty gritty about their different oils, their viscosities, and what makes each one specifically suited to its intended purpose. Third and finally, I'd like to briefly touch on synthetic versus petroleum-based lubricants. In the video description, I've included a few links to some helpful articles that go into even further detail about this topic. I personally only use synthetic oils like Hetman. I'm very sensitive to strong smells and chemical fumes and have had some unpleasant experiences with petroleum-based lubricants. Not everyone has that problem, but I'd rather avoid the nasty smell and the taste that coats my throat when I breathe in. I've found that I typically have more issues when using a cheap oil, so price point does matter here in my opinion. There are so many debates about which oils are better, and I am not going to claim that Hetman is the best, it's just what I prefer. You will find oils that you love, and I'd stick with those. My only advice is to keep two things in mind when choosing. The first piece of advice, go all synthetic or all petroleum based. Don't mix them. This can cause residue and gumminess to build up on slides and inside casings. This negative reaction typically looks and feels like a waxy, tacky coating that won't wipe off. You will most likely need to get a professional cleaning to remove it. Also, if you use products like Vaseline or lanolin that were not specifically formulated for brass instruments or metal parts in general, you run a much higher risk of this kind of reaction happening. Some people use some weird stuff and swear by it, but as someone who has done a lot of brass instrument cleanings, I speak as I find. Second piece of advice. If you change oils, get your horn clean first before you apply the new stuff. Again, you don't want the old lubricants and the new ones to mix. Also, if your horn hasn't been clean in a while, it's probably a good idea anyway. P.S. I am not being sponsored by Hetman. However, one bottle of oil should last you a long time, so I truly believe that it's worth investing in quality products. Also, taking good care of your horn with the proper products will reduce your trips to the repair shop, so you'll end up spending a lot less money in the long run. I can't tell you how many times I've seen a horn come in for repair work that simply has stuck slides, frozen rotors, or is just plain gunked up due to lack of regular maintenance. If you practice routine maintenance and lubrication, most of those issues can be prevented or significantly reduced. We are going to oil our rotors by applying the oil to three different spots on the horn, down the slides, under the caps, and at the gap behind the stop arm. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, why would you put oil down the slides? You only need to oil under the caps. They told me so in sixth grade. False. You do need to put some oil under the caps, but that is not the only place. And that is not how you oil the actual rotors. Let me show you why. This is a rotor and a section of valves that I cut up just for the purpose of showing you. Rotors look like this on the inside. You need to oil the rotors in the three places I mentioned, 
under the cap, down the slides, and at the rotor stem. You need a thick oil for the bearings, the stem and the top, and a thin oil for the rotors themselves. When you oil down the slides, it goes straight onto the rotor. However, when you oil under the cap, it is only going to oil this top bearing and the bearing plate. Any oil that runs down from the bearing will not reach the sides of the rotor. It will get caught in this little bowl on top of the rotor. See? So, only oiling under the caps will not be enough to keep your rotors feeling nice and smooth. Okay, back to the process. First, down the slides. I demonstrated this whole process of oiling the rotors in my cleaning video, so I'll run through it briefly right now. Hold the horn with the bell up by your face. If it touches the sides of the slides, the oil will actually strip the grease off, so we do not want to undo all of our hard work we just finished. So hold your horn with the bell up by your face while holding onto your horn like grim death. Carefully squeeze one to two drops of oil straight down the slides. Look at me, only two drops. That's all you need. You don't need more than that, trust me. Replace the slide. With the bell up by your face and the slides pointing up, we're going to work the slides in and out a few times. Don't press the valves down yet. After moving the slide in and out a few times to build up the air pressure inside the horn, you'll hear it hissing as the pressure builds up. Push the valve down. You should hear a thunk when you press the valve down as the air pressure is released. Wiggle the valve to work the oil onto the rotor. Repeat, and don't drop your horn. Next, we will oil under the caps. Remove the caps and set them aside in order. Wipe off any old oil. Grab your thick oil and make a tiny dome or bubble on top of the bearing. Wiggle the valve to work the oil into the bearing. Wipe the caps out and replace them on the horn, making sure they all fit snugly, but not too tightly. No need to use excessive force. Last but not least, we will oil at the rotor stems on the back. Hold the horn in a rest position in your lap. Look closely at the place where the rotor moves when you press the valve. Do you see this gap? That's where the oil goes. And that's also why many brands include a needle with the bottle so that you can easily apply oil only where you need it and avoid oiling the strings or the bumpers. The oil can soak into the strings and bumpers and cause them to deteriorate over time. There's pretty much only one step to this one. Grab your bottle and apply oil in the gap on all four rotors, and you're done. Phew, that was quite a bit of information, and I hope your brain has not turned to mush. There are quite a few things to keep in mind when lubricating your instrument. But the main point is this. Maintain your brass instrument by applying grease and oil regularly. If you do, it will save you lots of grief in the long run. Ask your teacher, your cohorts, or even some local musicians what they use and try out a variety of products until you find something that works for you. Then stick with it and use it often. Your horn will thank you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. And if you found this helpful, valuable, or just plain entertaining, please like this video and subscribe so you can be one of the first ones to see when more stuff comes out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. It's one of the first things you learn as a black. Blast player, blast oil, oil. I'm very sensitive to strong smells.